Welcome to this episode of Let's Talk, where we zoom in on the practical implications and next steps of some of the bigger sessions here at the Milan Congress. My name is Gerrit Heikoop and I'm very proud and happy to be joined by the chairs of the session talking about understanding and managing soft tissue at the implant level. At my Let's Talk table, I'm now joined by Francesco Cairo. Francesco, welcome. And also here with me, Silvia Maciero. Silvia, welcome to this table. Thanks. You both were chairing this exciting session with three different speakers, but let's start at the very basics. Why are we talking about managing the soft tissue at the implant level here in this Milan Congress? What's the news? Well, uh, basically we know from uh, a lot of evidence, starting from the literature over the last 10 or 15 years, that uh, uh, soft tissue probably represent the key elements in the long-term success of implant therapy. And uh, we have several potential scenarios. For example, the scenario of perimplantitis where soft tissue may act as a potential window for starting with the perimplantitis. We have the scenario of aesthetics. We know very well that uh, recession of the implant site is a classical element of, of a failure of a treatment. But we have also the other scenario that is the uh, predictability of the long-term maintenance. Less is the uh, keratinized mucosa and, and uh, higher is the number of complications around dental implants. In other words, soft tissue represents a key ailments today for treating implants. Exactly. Soft tissue, very important topic. Yet when I look at the title of this session, it specifically mentions at the implant level. Silvia, what is the relevance of that? Yes, because we asked the speaker to tell us uh, 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 their own idea of uh, the part of the implant or the part of the prosthesis rehabilitations that probably influences the relation of soft tissue reaction to the positionment of an implant or the, the positionment after surgery of the crown on the implant itself. And with these variabilities, uh, we ask them to define uh, how influence uh, the reaction on soft tissues. So you say there is a relation. So the, the, the position of the implant has an effect on the soft tissue in a later stage. Exactly. We know that uh, we have now to um, learn to position in the best way every implant that we want to have in the mouth of our patient because uh, it is uh, this first uh, surgery action that is the most important to better define after the correct uh, situation aesthetically but also anatomically at the level of soft tissues. Exactly. Is there, is there anything generic to say that we need to learn? Like, is there a one way that fits all? Probably not, because it always depends on the case. But what does the implant positioning do on the soft tissue? How does that work? Well, in other words, I think that we have a clear uh, situation where wrong position of the implant uh, strongly uh, influences the final aesthetic outcome. Yeah. It means that wrong position to buckley means resorption on bone and then recession. And because then, the soft tissue follows the bone resorption. Absolutely. And this means is the window for having complications, not only from an aesthetic standpoint, but probably from a, um, also a biological standpoint. I think that it's also very important to put on table one element that was underlined during the uh, lecture, that was biology. I strongly, you know, I was strongly fascinated from this word. Uh, and uh, uh, the speakers uh, strongly suggest to follow biology, meaning that uh, it's very important that every single clinical case, every single implant site should follow the requiring time to achieve the perfect outcome. So this is a very important element. So what does that mean, following biology? Is that waiting, uh, doing delayed, or what, what is the effect if I say, okay, let's follow the biology? I agree. Do you agree, Sylvia? Let's follow biology. Yes, it's... But uh, what does it mean in practice? Uh, it means that we have to know which patient is the patient in which we are introducing implants because ah. there is a great difference uh, in uh, the reaction of tissues if there is an history, for example, of periodontitis in our patients. But it means also 
that uh, we have to focus uh, our decision, remembering that now a lot of implants uh, in the 10 year that uh, we have later uh, respecting the positionment of the uh, fixture itself are going probably to go uh, into a peri-inflammatory situation that is called mucositis or peri-implantitis that we want uh, instead to avoid uh, trying to define in well which are the characteristics of the patients, of the site, and of the other risk factors that we have to, uh, to, to, to define, to hypothesize, and then to, to better uh, control. So if I understand you correctly, you say managing soft tissue actually means even better case selection. Are there, are there new ideas about which patients are perhaps less suitable for implants? Well, I think that we are probably looking at a, a new era, I would say, uh, a new era of uh, personalized implant therapy, I would say. I, I, it is a very complex I, I like the term. You coined yeah. it here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Milan Congress but 2024. I think that it's a very important keyword. It means that not all patients are the same and uh, hysteroperidontitis are not treated, periodontitis are not the amount of residual bone uh, position of implant, for example, these are key elements, uh, smoking or not smoking habits, but also systemic disease. So these elements may condition the possible position or not and the type of positioning. On the other end... So you say it's, you take all these factors into account for yes. your positioning and your treatment plan, not so much for the case selection and say you're yes. eligible for implants or not. Yes, this is a first step, but when uh, we are looking at at the patient that is a perfect candidate for implant treatment, there are, again, several factors that may drive your type of treatment, including post-extractive, delayed, or another or guided bone regeneration, for example. So I think that what was clearly focused in our session was the possibility to have a very open clinical scenario mm -hmm. and a number of different treatments that may fulfill the armamentarium, I will say, of the clinician. And Sylvia, what does that mean in the clinical practice? Doesn't that make the world very much more complex? Ah, yeah. eh? We had a standardized <laughs> protocol, all of a sudden we go to personalized implant ah, therapy. Yeah, because, mm, for example, we have clearly two, two kinds of, um, of patients. Um, we uh, represent here also our society, the Italian Society of Periodontology and Implantology, and so for us it's very important to focus that uh, the patients uh, sometimes, uh, often, uh, needs uh, uh, to have uh, implants inserted because uh, they have lost their, to their teeth. And so they need these uh, implants because, because they need uh, to chew again. On the other hand, uh, now we can have the privilege to give uh, implant rehabilitation also to uh, people who want uh, a stating on this uh, kind uh, of uh, fixture. So these are uh, two different populations with uh, different... So are you saying basically with better understanding and managing soft tissue, uh, whether it's we personalizing can... the protocol, exactly. we're opening a new category of patients? You're right. Yeah? I think that's a very good point. I think that uh, probably we are going to experience, um, I, I think that probably we are going to experience the next decade, the next 10, day, 10 years, um, probably a new concept or, uh, you know, to try to do the best that we can do in the single patient according to the skill of operators and according to the specific required by mm -hmm. the single patient. I think that this is an incredible uh, f point of view that we can assess in the future. Exactly. But we also talked in previous congresses about this type of client specifically coming with aesthetic needs might also be a, a different type of patient for the clinician. Eh? They have different demands, different tolerance of what they accept and not. What do you think, Sylvia? But nowadays we have all the possibility to study well every case that uh, has this kind of demand and to study which are the local characteristics because we have in our hands the surgeon has uh, in his hands the possibility of doing well in aesthetics because uh, he can uh, augment uh, soft tissues. Uh, the surgeon has also the possibility to decide how to put uh, the implant uh, at which level in the bone uh, related to the bone crest uh, to choose uh, 
which implants he prefers. And um, at the end, the prostodontic can decide which is the best uh, uh, anatomy of the provisional and then of the definitive uh, rehabilitation. So you say so we have no reasons to be fearful of this new category of patients. No, I'm we can do it. I'm worried about other categories of patients. <laughs> Which ones, for example? <laughs> and the periodontal, periodontal ones. Pain. Exactly, with the risk of periodontitis yes. and all that. Yeah. It's a tremendous risk, unfortunately. We know probably today we, we can do a lot of efforts to, to reach aesthetics, but unfortunately we have... Uh, an open world in order to treat per, per implantitis we have uh, and like um, s like say the um, daniel boozer in mm -hmm. our one of the speakers in the session the speaker of the session we also need to to have a um, good doctor good uh, odontologist good surgeon and also good uh, prosthodontics because uh, it is um, a very difficult um, step implantology is not a simple one as someone sometimes we we listen it is a difficult a very difficult surgery and there are very difficult rehabilitation if you want a then an implant with the characteristic of stability in long term exactly well exciting uh, cliffhanger to go watch the the full talk of daniel boozer to to wrap up if you next week walk back into your clinic or into scientific research work what do you hope this session is achieving? What do you hope your audience in the session today takes out of it and, and starts to implement next week? Well, I think that is a very nice uh, uh, suggestion to improve what we can do every single day, starting from the treatment plan, the patient selection, uh, moving to the perfect... And there the change is to be more aware and more zoomed in on the soft tissue. Absolutely. Because it's overlooked often, I understand. But, but that's why it's very important to try to consider that the final step of the treatment is the perfect soft tissue is, uh, you know, the uh, consequential of several previous steps, uh -huh. including the perfect 3D planification, the perfect implant application, the perfect prosthetic treatment. So everything seems to be joined. And this is very important. And uh, on the other hand, I think that... So you say the, the, the soft tissue and perhaps soft tissue issues yeah. are not just bad luck. It's yes. much more manageable and understandable Absolutely. than we think. Exactly. Absolutely. You didn't see the, the introduction that we did, me and Professor Cairo, the introduction of our session. We make yeah, a they are going to look. that is uh, exactly the center of what we want to transmit and, and that what uh, we want uh, uh, the clinician uh, suggests in their uh, daily practice because uh, um, I suggest you to look uh, at the video of the session yeah. and um, um, try to imagine the uh, situation that we uh, propose uh, in our Italian mountains. We focused uh, about uh, a mountain that is called the Giant's Tooth. And uh, if you are an alpinist and you have to reach the top of what you see from, uh, from far away, uh, you have to first of all reach the bottom of the rock that is called the gingiva of the giant suit. It's really called like that. And this was uh, the starting for us uh, to put the attention to soft tissues because uh, even if you have a good implant but you don't manage uh, starting from the initial of the, uh, the case, uh, if you don't manage with good tissue, or you don't uh, uh, make a good surgeon to have it, uh, perhaps uh, you could have uh, more uh, complication. Exactly, than, uh, it all starts at the basics. Exactly. Just like climbing a big mountain. Well, uh, Silvia Francesco, thank you very much for coming here, telling us a little bit about the consequences of that session. And I can imagine that by now you are super curious to actually watch the full recording of this session in the Milan online library. You'll see three talks by Daniel Boozer, he was mentioned, Anna Torres, and also Raffaele Cavacanti was one of the speakers in this session. So I invite you to dive into our online library and make sure you educate yourself based on science. Thank you for watching.